Chill, I'm excited to welcome first my co-host, Paul Hollis, author of the Hollow Man series and owner of Hollow Man Publishing in American VA. Paul, how are you? I know you're excited about our guest, another author yeah. body of yours, for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I'd like to, to welcome Jonathan Harris. He is a multi-award winning author. He's a TED, TEDx speaker. Uh, he is a, a, a coach. Uh, he's just done it all. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you so much. So, so grateful to be a part of this excellent show. Oh, thanks, Jonathan. So talk about why you became a writer. What was your motivation to write books? So I've always loved writing since I was younger. I feel like it's the perfect way to really express yourself without interruption. But believe it or not, it was a series of events that took place. Uh, long story short, I ended up getting a flat tire. And when I put the car in the shop, I ended up telling the mechanic the wrong repair. I told them that I needed a tune-up, which deals with the wiring, instead of a tire plug. So when I got the bill back, I ended up paying $200 extra that I shouldn't have had to pay at all because I told them the wrong thing. And my dad said to me, you know, why didn't you ask anybody for help? And my thought process at the time, I was 24. And, you know, when you're a 24 year old man, that is a very beautiful and dangerous spot to be in because you think you know everything and you don't know much of anything. <laughs> so as a result, um, it dawned on me that if I had just taken a moment and asked somebody who knew more about the subject, which was cars than I did, I wouldn't have been in that situation. So from there, my thought process went to, well, what do men, and more importantly, what do boys do who don't have any men in their life at all? And that's how my first book, uh, Master of Ceremonies, A Male's Guide for a Successful Life came about actually, it was just helpful tips for guys to lean on, whether they have a dad, have a big brother, have an uncle, have a grandfather, or just somebody that they can look up to, or if they don't, they have this resource. So it teaches them how to travel out of town by themselves, how to cook, how to budget, how to love yourself, how to choose good friends, how to date healthy people. And it's it's been such a blessing. You know, it's it definitely seems great. It's a great idea because ultimately the fathers that are divorced and don't have the opportunity a lot of times because of the estranged ex-wife or girlfriend that right. it's very difficult to have those relationships. So when you try that, that as a, as a child in that type of a situation, they couldn't help it. How can they build that relationship later based on so many different things? How can I develop that relationship with another male adult? When I really have lost a lot of trust, even though it might not have been the fa their father's fault, uncle's fault, whoever's mm -hmm. fault to build that relationship. That's what I think your goal is, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, I worked in higher education for a decade and I was the men's success coach for my university. And every week I ran a men's program where the guys would come out, we called a brother circle and they just talked. And to listen to the amount of stories of young men who wanted that relationship with their dad or some male was very heartbreaking, but you know, it, it led to some beautiful conversations around forgiveness and understanding. And what I used to always teach the young people is that when you get older, you will understand that your parents are still people. I think sometimes when you're a child, you those are your heroes. You think that your parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts are just these perfect beings until you start to see the human side to who they are. And that can hurt a little bit when you're a child. So as they get older, I've kind of been someone who's been that bridge in the middle. I've helped a lot of young men repair their relationships with their father and kind of stepped in as a mentor until they were at a good place with their own dads. So you're absolutely right. It's important to build that relationship, but it takes time. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort and in that process. And, and like, I feel for my, you know, situations when situations happen as, as divorcee, how to have those relationships with my kids. So I'm sure in the book, it also talks about how the father should be, right? Or the male role model, not just the child that's gone through this, right? Yeah, so the cool part about Master of Ceremonies is even though a lot of the life skills tips are rooted towards younger adults, teenagers, things like that, we're all in a different space in our development. So there may be some fathers who need a refresher themselves on certain character traits, because the thing about reconnecting and reconciliation is that if someone has been gone from your life or you all are not super close, when you do get back together, that has to still work. Because if, you, if I've been without you for 10 years and then you come back and it's now toxic for me, 
as the child, I can always take the approach of, well, I've spent most of my life without you anyway, so you can just go again. And we don't want that. We want it to be that when you return, you return for good. So I think a lot of the tips in the book are perfect, even for the dads to go over. It also, from another lens, it helps the dads kind of understand what the kids may be going through and thinking about so you can be intentional with those conversations. Is there a way to, is there another step up after your book? Are you doing coaching or anything to, uh, regarding this topic? Yeah, so I do, I do a lot of coaching, uh, right now, the focus of it has really been business coaching. My cousin and I own a vending machine company. So we do business co coaches through that. I also do author coaching for, uh, people looking to spread awareness about their books more, but my personal interest has always been men's development and men's empowerment. So at the end of the year, I'm actually looking to put together a healing retreat for men where they can come and they can unpack what they've been going through. Oh, that's great. And thank you. So looking to just really expand in that, that men's space. I was just telling a couple people the other day how we as a society have not invested enough in men's development from a young age. We don't forward into the programs in terms of the funding, the staffing and these different things. So then what you see is a society of now broken adult males who don't know how to heal, who don't know how to communicate. We're seeing it in show up in their jobs and family and their physical health and their mental health. So something has to be done. No. And I, I liked the, all the areas The we were, we had a CEO on talking about big companies. But when you think about the vending companies, that's intriguing as heck for me. Uh, that's intriguing. I love the whole men's uh, thing. And it's also interesting when you talk about authors as uh, Paul and I own a publishing company and we're always, there's a perfect way of what we do is make it affordable publishing through different platforms, but then also the marketing because the marketing becomes the challenge too. A lot of people yep. spend too much. And I'm sure you coached authors where they spent too much on publishing the book than marketing the book, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's something even so my first book I was telling you all about was published in 2016. So it turns eight very soon. Um, and I'm, I'm excited on the journey I've been on. But if I could go back and start over again with the knowledge I have now, I would have made sure that my marketing plan was just as airtight as I wanted the book to be good. Paul can speak of that. Can't yes. you, Paul? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's learning Indeed, and I keep yeah. telling him. You've learned all the secrets. You get punished when you have an older book trying to market versus a new book, but they want you to have multiple books. So once they see a newer book out, they're going to push the other books. It's almost just like social media. And this is me just kind of brainstorming and thinking algorithms. Think about it. You push out a good social media post consistently. They're going to go back to your old content and repost that because mm -hmm. you're developing the organic and say, okay, this one did even better. We know they're going to be playing the game. Amazon, this is a question. I don't know if you know this answer, Jonathan. I know this is what I love about live stream, but also love about I'm really playing to an audience live, even though there's a few, but I like to do that because I'm playing to my audience all over the world. Here's my question for you, Jonathan. Do you think that Amazon wants you to always create content just like all social media platforms want? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I don't think it hurts them. Um, but I guess that I would say, hmm, usually, it's funny because I'm usually not one who is stumped by questions. I'm always like, oh, I know exactly uh, what to say. <laughs> we I should always... ask AI, but we're not going to ask AI on that one. Right. But no, the, so, so the, I think that I wanted to see if your thoughts, but what I'm thinking, and this is what I'm truly thinking, Jonathan, is that, uh, I think they want you because I've heard the most successful authors have three to four books that yeah. their first book is not the one that kicked butt. I'm taking a course right now on click testing and it's amazing. And I'm doing it for one of my clients because we have a full-fledged agency, but I go through the courses. So there's one thing I offer my clients is, hey, you have courses you just really didn't get because you don't have the marketing background and the years I've been doing this for 15 plus years. I'm happy to go through a course for you, implement it and run it with my team. And that I was like blown away, but really Paul is in the perfect boat with three books of his own and three audio books. But the problem is he's not written anything new. And I think that the what Amazon wants, like every other platform wants, we're not going to reward you. And let, even though, if, but you have multiple things, we want to have multiple things to push to people. So if they buy one book, hey, you should think about buying this book now. Think about it. It's the same thing as like at a grocery store. 
Mm-hmm. But social media is the same way in certain ways. But that's something to ask. I'll ask AI that question at one point in time. But Jonathan, <laughs> where can we connect with you? A lot of interesting stuff. You're a very intriguing guy. I look forward to continuing the relationship. Where can we go to find info on you? Uh, it's been so great talking with y'all. Um, so my, I'm one of the most blessed people in the world because all of my social media is exactly the same. So my website Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Snapchat, even PlayStation Network, all author John, A-U-T-H-O-R-J-O-N. So can you believe you took that and not John from the books in the Bible? Very, very interesting, especially when you see the chosen and how popular. Because I did try to search author John on on uh, Google, no deal. So hmm. interesting thing, but all the stuff came up in the book of John. We well, can't beat that. You're not going to be, you're not going to beat the gospels. I'm sorry. No, no, you're not, not going to be as popular as that, John. Well, I appreciate it, Jonathan. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. All right. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley show. We'll be back in just a moment.